Hey guys, today we are talking about Tinder, Swindler, and Dirty John, and how to protect yourself from online dating scams. I'm gonna share with you guys a few things that you should do before you go on a date, the red flags to look out for, and then the things you should do if you think something's up. I have experienced something in my last situation, so I'm going to share my experience, the things I did, and what you should do in this video if you are part of the online dating community. Hey guys, I am Angela Jean, the official breakup coach, teaching you how to use your breakup to be a catalyst to your next level in life. And this video is actually what shifted my entire channel, which inspired all my workshops, is because I actually dealt with a situation that was very similar to the Dirty John. It wasn't exactly the Tinder swindler, because my didn't portray this fabulous lifestyle, but it was someone that swooped in, the love bombing, then asking for money and all that stuff. So I'm going to give you all all the precautions you can take but I will tell you right now as much as you think that this would never happen to you because you're too smart you're too this you're too that if you are in a vulnerable place which I was and which a lot of women are when you've dealt with a lot of broken relationships and disappointments you are very likely to fall prey to a situation like this why because you want to believe why because you want love why because you will do anything to push that fairy tale forward once you have someone in front of you committing to you and painting the picture of this future it is very easy to fall victim to it because i did it myself i am going to give you five precautions that you can take and a few other things you can do like i said if you do see red flags to start protecting yourself and somewhat collecting evidence if it really comes to that level which it did for me but the best thing you can do for yourself to make sure or something like this never happens to you is to take the time to heal yourself because when you are healed you maintain boundaries you don't make bad decisions you don't really attract in damaged people because you're no longer damaged okay so that's another video let's go ahead and get started with the top five precautions you can take if you're part of the online dating community Okay, you guys, so precaution number one, and this is for my girls in their 20s. If you think that you're looking for an older, sophisticated man, and so you're going from the 40 to 50 range, I just wanna give you a little warning. So I came across my previous situation's friend's profile on a dating app, and on it he says, looking for his soulmate. Now I know for a fact that this fella is with a different 20 year old every weekend. So I was like, why does he say that? And he asked him, he called him out because they thought it was funny. And this is exactly what he said. And it made my skin crawl. And that was 5,005 red flags I saw in that situation that I ignored. He said he loves young girls with daddy issues and it gets them every time and laughed. So you have to be careful, you young girls, that you think you're dating an older, sophisticated man. Just because a guy's 40 plus, you may think that he's sophisticated, older, has his shit together, knows what he wants. Absolutely not. And there's nothing wrong with age gaps in relationships. Not at all, that's not what I'm saying. But I will say, a lot of men that are 45 to 50 that start going down to their 20s, it's because they cannot handle a relationship with a woman. They can't handle a relationship with someone their age because of the fact we call you out. Once you're grown and you are lying, cheating, blacking out, crashing your car, like things like that, that's not cute anymore. So yes, a woman will call them out and they don't like it because it makes them have to level up and leveling up takes energy and takes work. You know, you can't live the Peter Pan life, but they want to. So they'll date 20 year olds and to a 20 year old, this is when you should be partying and getting drunk and doing all the stupid stuff that we all do in our 20s. There's nothing wrong with that for the 20 year old, but that is oftentimes why these 45 to 50 year olds will go down that far the scale. So you are not necessarily getting a sophisticated man. They don't have to man up. So all I'm saying is just be a little careful. Listen, if you guys just wanna have fun and that's fun for you, great. But from my perspective as a woman, hearing a man say, that he loves girls with daddy issues, it gets him every time, that bothered me, you know what I mean? Because here I am, I'm trying to guide women and protect them, not prey on their unhealed wounds. And this is exactly what he's doing. So I didn't like that. So that's just one little heads up that I thought I would give my 20s. Okay, so now let's move on to number two. 
Number two is the love bombing. There's nothing more fun about when you meet someone, especially in today's day and age, and they are all in. And they're texting you good morning, and they're texting you good night, and they're checking on you in the middle of the day, and they're planning dates with you, and they're consistent, and they're showing up, which is another thing that people don't really do anymore. So you're like, yes, he's in. But the problem is, is when you push it forward, and you're having the sex, and you're spending so much time together, you aren't really seeing the real person. You're just seeing the fun, happy, sexy guy that's showing up and taking you on dates. You have to really slow things down to start to see how someone actually lives their life, how they communicate, how they spend money, how they save money, how they live, their friends. Like all of these things paint a picture of someone. And when you jump into the love bombing, if you guys have ever noticed, it's just the two of you and you kind of depart from your friends and depart from the world a little bit. And it's almost like they do that on purpose to separate you from your world and to wrap you up in their fantasy and their future planning. Guilty, 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 guilty. I've done it all, you know what I mean? Because the minute you're in love, that's all you need. You're like, I can do anything. I can live anywhere. I can be anyone with this person as long as I have them by my side. So that's the danger of love bombing. Because once you get the sex involved, sex for women is totally different than sex for men. Sex for men is not an emotional act. It's more of a physical act. Where sex for women is more of an emotional exchange. And if you have attachment styles or codependency issues, the minute you have sex, you're attaching, especially if the sex is good, <laughs> okay? And usually with these type of guys that are hustlers, the sex is really good, <laughs> not gonna lie. So be careful of love bombing. Don't be afraid to take things slow. Okay, you guys, number three, which is what I fell victim to in my last situation, was the future planning that never happens. This is very manipulating and very calculating because they paint a picture of your future, which is what every girl wants, right? To hear what we're gonna do in the future. Are we moving in together? Are we getting married? Are we having babies? All of this stuff. We were immediately having a baby and anytime I would ask a question about it, it was always sidestepped. Like, can we afford a baby? Cause I had no clue what this person financially had. But anytime I would ask, can we afford a baby? His answer was, we both have $100,000 cars and we can't afford a baby. There was no straight answer. There was always a reason why it wasn't happening. So they take you down this very windy path to get to this vision that they're painting that's never gonna happen. So be very careful of getting an apartment together and at last minute, for some reason, they can't pay for it. It's just like the Tinder swindler movie. It doesn't have to be a huge hustle like that. There are little hustles. Like my situation, three times in a row, we were putting a down payment on a house to the point to where we were meeting with the contractor. We had blueprints. I'm taking measurements. We're ordering fridges and looking at countertops and every situation was different. But every single time, who was putting the money down? Me. I was putting the money down and it was gonna be in his name. And I didn't think about it because I was just too hyper-focused on my happily ever after and doing anything I could to push that fairy tale forward with the man of my dreams. Okay, so it happens to all of us. And so you have to be very careful of the future planning. If you guys are planning something together and when it actually comes time to pay for it and all of a sudden they can't, please, Keep your money because just like in the documentary, you will never get it back. Okay, you guys, so last precautions that I wanted to share with you. If you are doing online dating, I insist that you talk to the person on the phone first. I can't tell you how many girlfriends I've talked to that just go meet blindly. I'm like, you haven't gotten on a call? Get on a call, see if you guys have any chemistry on the phone. If you don't, why would you get all dressed up and go waste your time to sit across from a dud? However, on that note, don't ever give your phone number out. Do a Skype call because that's an invitation in the email or a Zoom like you know, or there are a thousand apps where you can download a burner number and use that for your online dating people until you know that they are normal. Why? Because you can take your number, put it in the Google search bar, and it tells them everything about you. If you own property, where you live, all the addresses you've lived, your family members, everything. You have to pay to have this blocked. So if you have not, I highly suggest getting a burner number, or like I said, using Zoom. Now moving on to another precaution. If you guys are already in a situation and you're starting to see red flags, you need to do what I did. I started documenting everything just in case, 
just in case. And I know that sounds crazy. It's like, are you kidding me? Just leave if it's getting that bad. But when you're vulnerable and you think you're in love and you think you have this future with this person, you make dumb decisions. Unhealed people make unhealthy decisions. So what I did was I screen captured our entire conversations on text, screen capture everything on WhatsApp, screen capture everything inside Instagram, because both of those platforms allow you to delete. If you do transactions on Venmo, which we did, I screen captured everything. In the description, write something like it's a loan to be paid back, just something as a precaution to cover yourself and protect yourself. So the silver lining to my Dirty John situation was becoming a relationship coach, taking the time to heal myself and help other women. I have created a handful of workshops. You can check them out in the link below. They are not going to be accessible until March first. But if you have any questions, you guys email me. I am looking so forward to working with you all and guiding you all on your journey. All right, guys, hopefully this video was helpful. It is crazy times we're living in. <laughs> okay. I'll see you guys next week. And obviously if you have any tips of your own, leave them in the description box below. I don't want to make things harder.